Hi everyone. We wanted to go through a couple of our thoughts on the AeroPress today. There's um, lots of different things you can do when you're preparing coffee with the AeroPress, loads of different methods. Um, the main difference for me is what you choose to filter through, whether it be paper or mesh. Um, but I have had a lot of people ask about what the difference between inverted and regular brewing of the AeroPress is. So we're going to do one of each just to talk through the differences, why you might choose to do it one way or the other. Ultimately, there's not a huge amount of difference that you're going to taste in the cup, whether it's been brewed inverted or regular, but it might be easier for you to choose uh, to go for inverted or to go for regular, depending on what you are comfortable doing in the kitchen. So first of all, with both, we're going to rinse the filters. This one here is a mesh filter, just a punched metal disc basically, so it's not going to absorb any oils or hold back any fine particulates. Here we have a paper filter, which should lead to a much cleaner cup. There we go. To keep them relatively similar, I'm going to do uh, the mesh filter regular with 16 grams of coffee and the paper filter I'm going to brew inverted, same with 16 grams of coffee. Let's put the uh, coffee in, 16 grams. There we go. And this is ground a little finer than we did for the Clever Dripper or the V60 where we said to cast the sugar, just a couple of notches finer is all you really need to do. Start the timer. And I'm going to try and get 250 grams of water in here. And that's a bit of an ask when the coffee is very, very fresh, or if you put the uh, plunger quite deep into here, it will shrink the size of the brew chamber a little bit. That's at 240, a little more, and there. It's about as much as you can brew inverted. So if you want to really max out the portion size, this might not be the best way. But here's a really nice benefit. I can give it a little stir to make sure that any coffee on the top is mixing in nicely, but also down here at the bottom, if anything is settling, if it's settling on your filter paper, it might change how the coffee's gonna plunge down and extract. Whereas I can avoid any dry clumps uh, by getting the stick right uh, down at the very, very bottom onto the rubber and give it a nice mix like this. If you're brewing it the regular way up and you wanna stir really far down, there's a chance you're gonna disrupt the filter paper a little bit. So that's a, a downside if you're brewing regular and really wanna make sure everything is stirred very very well if you're dry if you're going very fine it might be more of an issue for clumping so if you want to brew fast maybe brew inverted like this that's really nicely mixed you can see as well the level's gone down a little bit now so i'm going to put the cap back on with the rinsed filter paper and this is a nice trick to do you you just have to plunge a little bit until you see some of the brewed coffee beading on the top and that means that there's no air left in the chamber now. So when I flip it, I'm not going to leave any grounds on the rubber bung because there's not going to be any gap between the rest of the brewed coffee and that, and that coffee. So let's flip it over and let it sit here while we prepare this one. I've also got 16 grams of coffee. And we're going to add the same amount of water, 250 grams. It is fractionally cooler, but not enough to really avoid this uh, test. Just at two minutes, I'm pouring this in. You can see how some of it is dripping through. Not a crazy amount, but it is relevant. And I'm gonna mix this one as well, just like the other one. But again, if I go too far down to the bottom, there's a chance of disrupting the filter paper. Here, because it's a mesh one, it's pretty rigid. So this is a nice uh, way around to do it. And then I'm just gonna pop the plunger in place so that I don't lose too much of the brewed coffee coming through as it sits and steeps. You can see the, the coffee that's already come through is fairly light in colour. It's not as extracted as the rest of the coffee is going to be. So it's not a, a perfect immersion brew in the way that this one is. We're coming up to two and a half minutes. I'd say it's about time for this one to, to plunge. So let's get a little plunge down. You don't really want to put too much force on when you're doing the air press. I think if you've got a very, very fine grind and you try and squeeze very hard, you've got a great, uh, greater chance of it slipping off the mug, maybe causing a bit of a spill and a bit of a burn. So just plunge lightly. You don't really want it to take um, 
but to be any quicker than about 30 seconds to plunge through the bed of coffee. And you'll feel a little more resistance when you come down to the actual bed of coffee. Pretty straightforward. I can hear it change uh, the sound a little bit there, so I'm not going to press too much more, otherwise it's going to be uh, a little bit more sort of bitter and oily. Let's give it a stir. No more, we'll take that in a sec. So we ended the water here at two minutes. I'm at three and a half on my clock now, so we've got a little bit more time, but I am actually going to give this one an extra stir. I could be really uh, thorough with my stirring and agitation here, but here I wanted to get the plunger on a little bit sooner. So before we need to plunge, I'm going to take the top back off gently, give it one extra little stir, make sure everything got nice and evenly wet. And then we're going to pop the top back in and plunge just like the other one. This is going to be easier to plunge. There's a little bit less resistance coming from that metal filter paper. Try and take a similar amount of time. And I can see now, compared to the other one before, I've got a little dome of coffee formed and I'll stop just before the air starts to go through on that one. Bring up the plunger a touch to avoid too many drips. And that's 4.30. I can stir this one. So it's two of the same ratio of coffee to water on the same grind, same kind of time it took to brew as well, but brewed a little bit different. Um, they look pretty similar. This is, looks a little lighter in colour, which is kind of weird. Um, but I think the reason is when it's a bit cloudier, the brewed coffee, it tends to sort of reflect more light back at you. I'm not very good at the science of this. All I know is that whenever you have a cloudier brewed coffee, like from a French press or an air press, it can be quite sort of orangey and um, opaque like this. Whereas when it's a little bit more translucent and glassy through, filter pa uh, through a filter paper, it looks darker in colour, more reddish. And if this was a, if we had also a carafe of V60 filter paper or Chemex even, it would look even more glassy and potentially a little more dark in colour as well, less of those orangey tones coming back at you. So they do look fractionally different. The main difference is not going to be the look, or necessarily the taste, but more the mouthfeel. So let's have a little taste of them both and see how they are. I'm going to taste the paper one first, because it's less likely going to sort of sit on my palette and cloud tasting the next one, because this is likely to be a bit more oily. It, it's a little bit different in terms of a sort of creaminess and fattiness here that it fills out the mouth a little bit differently to this one, but I find this one has a little bit more acidity. Uh, maybe that's because certain things are happening with this cup which block your taste buds and prevent your tasting certain traits like sweetness or acidity or bitterness. Uh, and this just is a generally more sort of fatty, round, satisfying, comforting cup of coffee, whereas this you can maybe taste the flavours and the nuance in the cup a little bit better. So even though it's not down to being inverted or uh, regular brewing method. It's more to do with the material filtering your coffee through in these cases. Th this is a coffee from Ecuador called Ramiro Grande, after the farmer. It's quite a citric and uh, elegant coffee, very floral, and there's a really lovely clean sugariness to it, um, very white sugar-like. And it does show through in both cups, but I feel like it suits this better because it's a very slim, elegant cup. If I had something that was maybe a bit fuller roasted, if I wanted to brew one of our espresso roasts, for example, and use a bit more coffee, I might use the metal filter if I really wanted something more body driven and more round and full. Um, but this is this is actually a really, really nice um, way to brew Ramiro Grande, I think, with the, with the filter paper. But do experiment, and that's the great thing with the air press. You can experiment with a different dose of coffee, different temperatures, different ways of agitating, regular, inverted, mesh, fil uh, mesh papers, sorry, mesh filters or filter papers, and you can do so much with them. So please be in touch if you have any questions about brewing the AeroPress. We're still using the betterbrewing@workshopcoffee.com email address. And um, yeah, we'll hopefully get more out of your morning cup of coffee. So that's all for now. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon.